Hey everyone and welcome to another What I Eat In A Day video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you everything that I eat in a day as a vegan. And as always, it's gonna be really simple, easy to make, but also really delicious and nutrient dense. So I hope that this video gives you some good ideas. Before we get started in today's video, I wanna thank our place for partnering with me on this video. I use the Always Pan, which is a non-toxic, non-stick pan, and I have for over a year now. And every time I show it in one of my videos, I get so many questions from you guys, basically asking me, it's pretty, but is it really effective? Is it worth the hype? Is it actually a good pan? And I've been using it for over a year. It is a pan that I use almost every single day and it has really, really replaced a lot of the pans that I use on an everyday basis when I'm just cooking myself meals because you can braise in it, you can steam, you can boil pasta, you can make rice. The pan itself is really lightweight, like actually surprisingly so, which I was really happy about because I feel like some cookware is so heavy and clunky and this is very lightweight, but it cooks really evenly. I have this burner on my front stove. It's the front right hand burner that is seriously possessed because it cooks way hotter than all of the other ones and it's not even like the heat on the back side of it is a lot hotter but when I use my always pan on about medium heat it's perfect it's evenly distributed and I can cook evenly when I'm using that pan so it's really really good for that there's the actual pan itself which is non-toxic and non-stick and then it also has a stainless steel steamer basket that fits right inside and I like to warm up my tortillas in that steamer basket I'll steam kale or veggies it's really really quick and easy if you ever don't have time to cook a sweet potato in the oven like bake a whole sweet potato a lot of times you can just chop it up, throw it in the steamer, and depending on how large you chop it, it can be ready in about 15 minutes. So it is really handy. And it has a beechwood spatula that it comes with and it sits right on top of the pan. There's this integrated spoon rest so you don't have to have a separate spatula rest and you don't have to put it straight down on the cooktop and get that all dirty. It fits right on top. And you'll notice it has these little spouts on the side so you can easily drain any liquid. Like if you're making pasta, you don't have to put the pasta into a separate colander and get that dirty and then have to wash that. You can just kind of use the lid to corral all the pasta and very easily pour the liquid out without making a mess. So it's just a really well designed pan. I know it's beautiful, but it's a lot more than just a pretty pan. It's very, very functional and I absolutely love it. And I also picked up a new cutting board. Now with nonstick pans and with cutting boards, I used to just go for the cheapest one I could find, but inevitably they wear and tear, especially nonstick pans that are not made well they can just kind of disintegrate over a while that coating disintegrates and stuff starts to stick and then you have to throw them away and rebuy them and rebuy them and the same thing with cutting boards so I feel like I'm at a place in my life where I just really want to have stuff that's gonna last a long time so I'm not constantly replacing it and this is an absolutely beautiful black walnut wood cutting board and one side has this ridge which is like a juice trench so if I'm cutting melon or tomatoes it will catch all of the juice so it's not falling all over the countertop which is nice but the other side is nice and smooth so I can actually use this as a serving platter so if I'm making you know a vegan charcuterie board or something like that it looks absolutely beautiful I love this color and you can just tell it's well made it's nice and heavy and it, it's just the prettiest cutting board I've ever had to be honest so I wanted to show you this as well and right now they're doing a buy one get one free sale so if you click the link in the description box below and get the always pan you will get the spruce steamer basket along with it you can use it to steam vegetables dumplings bao whatever you like and it comes with these really long chopsticks that make it really easy to turn over the dumplings if you're cooking something without getting your fingers hot from the steam so it's really nice and safe and it fits perfectly on top and I absolutely love it so this sale is a limited time offer so if you want to take advantage of it and get your buy one get one then go ahead and use that link in the description box below. If you have any questions about the Always Pan, let me know in the comments as well. I have been using this pan for a long time and I use it a lot, so I am definitely a really big fan and I think you guys will really enjoy it too. So take advantage of the sale while it lasts. And with all of that said, let's go ahead and get started with this What I Eat in a Day. For breakfast on this day, I made a quick smoothie and I started with some strawberries, which are a really good source of vitamin C. Then I added bananas to make it sweet and creamy and some spinach and a half a cup of frozen spinach has 15% of your daily calcium and it's also a really good source of vitamin K. Then I added pumpkin seeds which offer a lot of protein as well as fiber, iron, magnesium, zinc, and flax which have a lot of fiber as well as omega-3 and protein so it's nice to kind of sneak that into the smoothie. It blends really nice and smooth so that's always in a smoothie for me. 
I added some vanilla protein, which is super optional, but I love how it kind of makes a smoothie have a milkshake consistency. And then I topped it with cinnamon and some crunchy chocolate cereal, which I think is such a good combo with the strawberries. This one is by Three Wishes. It's actually made of chickpeas, which is pretty cool. And then I drizzled it with some almond butter, one because it looks nice, but mostly because it's delicious. And a lot of you asked me how I do that drizzle on top of you know oatmeal bowls and, and pancakes. And the trick is to stir it really well first so that it's kind of softer. And then I put a little bit more than I need on my spoon and I just zigzag back and forth. And it creates this really beautiful design that makes whatever you're cooking look really nice. And that was it. It only took three minutes, but it was so delicious. Really, really packed with nutrients and gotta love a chocolate strawberry combo, especially first thing in the morning. Hey guys, good morning. It's actually kind of afternoon now, but I'm having a get your life in order kind of a day today. I've been up for a while. I had breakfast, which you would have seen already, and I ran errands really quickly, just like two little things, and then now I am stripping the bed so that I can wash my sheets. I'm going to clean up around here, get a little workout in. I haven't done any kind of like exercising in about a week or so just because sometimes especially right before my period I just feel kind of tired and you know I just feel like gentle is the best way to go so I, I walk around my neighborhood for some fresh air and for some movement but I'm feeling really energized today so I think I'm gonna do like a YouTube workout or I might see what's available on class pass and then I'm gonna be making a lunch that's gonna be like a meal prep lunch today because I want to make sure that I have some healthy options for the next couple days because I'm gonna be busy and I have some time today and I'm gonna make my stovetop frittata recipe which is really good for meal prep because not only is it nice to have just on its own but it's really good for breakfast sandwiches because it's like it tastes like frittata so it has like an eggy kind of flavor so you can make breakfast sandwiches out of it but because it's flat you can use it to make sandwiches and it doesn't like fall all over the place like if you were gonna do like a tofu scramble or a just egg sometimes that is a little bit messy to eat because of the scramble and the small pieces but this is like a sheet basically like you can cut a slice of it and put it between you know bread with avocado vegan cheese tomato whatever you want and it's just like a really good breakfast sandwich so I'm gonna have it today probably just as a frittata and then throughout the week like either for breakfast or lunch I'll have it ready to go so I'll show you how I do that so I'm gonna go get my laundry started I'm gonna figure out what my workout situation is gonna be and then I will see you at lunchtime all right, so it's a little bit later now, and while I was getting ready, I went ahead and I had two of these Rice Krispies treats by Blake's. They are Rice Krispies treats, but they have like seeds and chocolate chips in them too, so they're not just plain Rice Krispies treats. And I like them, they're really good. I got them on Thrive Market. They have that same texture that I remember traditional Rice Krispies treats having, like light as air and like crispy, but not hard, because some Rice Krispies treats can be so hard when you bite into them, and these are just really airy and light. They're not soggy, like they definitely are crispy, but they're soft, like they're really fun to bite into, but they're not as sweet as traditional Rice Krispies treats. The original Rice Krispies treats has like a really gooey marshmallow, like very sweet, um, marshmallow in it and this is definitely not as sweet but I still think they're really good I'm glad I gave them a try and they're just nice to have when you just like need something and you kind of want a treat but you also don't really have time to mess around I was getting ready I was finishing my laundry I'm still doing my laundry to be honest with you but these were perfect little grab-and-go snack I had two they're really small so I have two but I imagine like if you have kids this would be like a perfect little lunchbox treat I don't know I really like them and then I started making my stovetop frittata. And to do this, I'm just gonna saute some veggies. I did about a quarter of a cup of onion and some yellow squash. My original recipe uses zucchini, but you can use any kind of vegetable that you like or that you have on hand. I season it with salt, pepper, and some garlic, as well as thyme. I love the combination of thyme with zucchini and squash. And then after about three to four minutes, once it's kind of translucent, it's done cooking. So then I'll just spread it into an even layer and then dollop it with my super silky smooth tofu frittata base, which is very easy to make. I just mix together a combination of medium tofu and firm tofu, and then I season it with some baking, well, first of all, baking powder for lift, but then I season it with onion powder, paprika, turmeric, some nutritional yeast, black pepper, and salt. 
and that's pretty much it. A little bit of olive oil gives it some body and then I blend it until it is silky smooth and it's going to rise and become kind of firm so you can slice this just like you would a quiche. It's like a crustless quiche, you can think of it that way. And I like to decorate the top with some veggies. Sometimes I do cherry tomatoes. On this day, I did squash and some vegan Parmesan cheese. And then this doesn't have to go in the oven, which is why I call it my stovetop frittata. You're just going to put a lid on it and the steam will help to create that lift and that really beautiful fluffy texture. And then I'll just remove it from the heat and it's important to let this rest for about 10 minutes. That will make sure that it is sliceable and that it kind of stays together. So I just take a rubber spatula and I run it all along the edge, which is why it's really important to do this in a non-stick pan. It makes it so much easier. And then I just slice and serve. Sometimes I do this kind of French style with a nice green salad and a zesty vinaigrette, and that's just such a good pairing. On this day, I went for two slices of frittata and some avocado toast, which is also really delicious. I absolutely love the texture on this. It's not soft and mushy, like it definitely holds its shape and you can slice it and serve it, which is really nice, but it's also airy and it kind of lifts up a little bit because the mix of the protein that's in the tofu as well as the baking powder, it really does help to kind of give it a little bit of lift so it's not dense. It's like light and airy in the way that a frittata should be, so cheers. If you like quiche, you'll really like this because it has like this kind of creamy, cheesy butteriness to it, but then you get the thyme and I put a little parsley on top and black pepper. So it has like a nice herbiness as well, which I think is such a good combination. If you like French food, I feel like that's a really popular combination is like onions, vegetables, buttery cheesiness, and then herbs. Like that combination is so tasty. I even think like just the squash with thyme and onions and garlic and salt and pepper, like that's just a really good combination if you ever just need like a side dish and you could put some vegan parmesan on type on top type on top right before you serve it i think this would be a really yummy side dish especially right now because yellow squash zucchini all of those vegetables so good right now thought i'd show you my outfit today because it is so comfortable i got these pants from urban and you can see they're like really really ignoring my tripod i promise my tripod is not always there it just is usually on filming days. I am doing laundry, as you can see. Ignore the background, we're talking about the pants. They have these little suns on them, which I think are really cute. And then I have this orange asymmetrical shirt. And I like that the pants are really high-waisted because I would not wanna wear a crop top that was this short if I didn't have like pants that went really high up. Here, now you can see a little bit better. I have a different mirror. There we go. But anyway, this is my outfit. It's really cozy and comfy, so I thought I would show you. Dinner on this night was super easy. I just steamed some kale, and I did this just by putting it in a little steamer basket and adding a little bit of water. I like to de-stem the kale, and then I'll just kind of rip it into large pieces. Earlier in the afternoon, I baked a spaghetti squash. I just put this in the oven at 400 degrees whole. I don't add anything to it. I just put it on a cookie sheet and I let it roast for about 45 minutes to an hour. It depends on how large it is, but when it's done, it will be fork tender and I like to let it cool a little bit and then slice it in half. I'll scoop out the seeds and then just use a fork to kind of shred it into a spaghetti texture that looks just like this. And a lot of times I will eat this like as a spaghetti or I will mix it with actual noodles to make it a little bit more hearty. It kind of just depends on my mood. Then I put that into the pan along with some store-bought spaghetti sauce. This one is from Target. I also had some random chickpeas in the fridge, so I decided to use that up. And then I ended up adding the rest of the spaghetti squash because I figured why not just make it all and I could eat as much as I want and then have leftovers the next day. So I mixed that all together, finished it with some salt, and that was it. Really, really simple, but very flavorful at the same time. And I served that with another piece of the vegan frittata and a generous helping of the spaghetti squash as well as the steamed kale. And a lot of times I'll do like a vegan cheese on top of this, but on this day I had my one minute sauce in the fridge, which is a tahini based sauce. And I'll put the recipe in the description box below, but it created a really delicious kind of creamy topping that tied all of the different elements together. And then I love adding crunch when I have a dish like this. So walnuts was the perfect topping. I love a meal like this because it utilizes leftovers, but it's also packed with veggies and at the same time it has kind of comfort food vibes. Like it's just a really cozy, hearty meal and I definitely went back for seconds because it was delicious. So if you've never tried spaghetti squash, definitely give it a try.
show you something very exciting that I received in the mail today. I got not one, not two, but the whole line of Forager's new vegan ice creams to try. It's gonna be National Ice Cream Day on July 18th, and so they sent me their new range of cashew-based ice creams. I think cashew milk ice cream and coconut milk ice cream were the first vegan ice creams that I'd ever had, and I always really liked cashew milk ice creams. They're super, super creamy. I went ahead and chose the cookies and cream ice cream on this day and my tip is to let it sit out on the counter for five to ten minutes before scooping and then it's nice and creamy. I watched some Netflix and had my ice cream and it was the perfect way to end the day. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this what I eat in a day video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and check out the description box below to check out the always pan and some of the beautiful accessories that I picked up as well. I really hope that you enjoy them and have a really good rest of your day. Bye.